Pastoriatis, good morning and welcome to our touch point today. I want to specifically welcome you to a brand new week. And I trust God that this week the Lord will place your feet on a higher ground. As you step out this week, you are stepping into pleasant places. That the areas you have not assessed before, you will assess them this week in the name of Jesus. The hand of God is upon you and your businesses. You will exert, you will do exploit, and you will come back with testimonies to the glory of God's name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, my name is God Gift Austin. And like we do it, we pick the topics and we elaborate on them scripturally to understand the mind of God in those areas towards us. And in so doing, we're able to handle those questions that have been or have lingered in our hearts over the time. Praise the Lord. So, we have been talking about how can I accept others? That is acceptance. How can I accept others? And the last thing we did was that in Matthew 5, 54, which says, But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Do you understand me? So that is instruction from God. And I, I remember I was saying something that this is different from suffer not the wicked to live. Because we were told that earlier on in the Old Testament to not suffer the wicked to live. But if you look at this, uh, Matthew 5 verse 44, it is clear that they are not closely related in any way. So if you have to hold on to suffer not your enemies to live, you know that this one telling you to pray for your enemies is actually not in line with the scriptures or with the word of God. So there's something, a discrepancy or a difference in, in the both side. This is a new commandment that Jesus Christ has come to give to us. That is what you must love your enemies. You must pray for your enemies. Amen. So you don't longer hold on to suffer, not them to live. Because that one always create in your heart that there is enemy around you. But this one tells you that you must learn to love even when you perceive this an enemy. This morning we'll start off from Romans chapter 14 1 and 3 in the same how can I accept others? Accept other believers who are weak in faith and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. Those who feel Free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. Do you understand me? And those who don't eat certain food must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. Alright, so that's instruction from the word of God. You know, God said to Peter, kill and eat. But you know in the Old Testament, he said there are certain food you don't eat. But in this regard, he said now, kill and eat. What he said, God has made everything holy. So he's no longer trying to live in the law. So say, oh, God said this, God said this. But now, are you not conversant with the scripture that the law said, I have made it clean. And whatever God has made clean, you don't have power to say it is unclean. Alright? So, we can pray for those we dislike. Pray for their well-being. Through prayers, God can help us see each person through a uh, his eyes. That is in Luke 6, 37. We need to understand that. Through prayer, God sees everyone. Do you understand? So it's instruction to pray for those you dislike. Amen. So do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. So that is in Luke 6, 37 we are reading. Do not judge others so that you will not be judged. Forgive them. And that is why I keep telling people that if God really wants you to kill people by that instruction that we are carrying, do, uh, do not suffer the wicked to live. Do you understand me? Why would God have sent missionaries into thick places where there are 98% of witches? He wouldn't have sent missionaries there, or perhaps does he not like the witches, or has he sent the, the, the missionaries to go and die, or to go and kill the witches? 
is because God, God so loved the world. So we must not love the world the way God loves them and hate what God hates. So one of the ways is what? To love what God loves and hate what God hates. And one of the things God loves so much is the people. So you must love them, whether you perceive them as your enemies, because you are once all again perceived as an enemy to others. All right. In James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, the Bible says, Don't speak evil against each other. Dear brothers and sisters, if you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. Do you understand that? But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. You don't begin to assess things based on your own view. Obey what God says you should obey and leave it for God. God alone who gave the law is a judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbors? You don't have right. You have no right to even condemn them. All right. So in Romans chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. I love this. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. Ah, for you who judge others do this very same thing. You say you are not different. You say you are inexcusable. So when you say others are bad, you are actually condemning yourself, not really the others you are talking about. When you are judging them, you are judging yourself. When you are condemning them, you are condemning yourself. So why not love others the way you love yourself? If you love yourself, if you truly love yourself, you don't condemn others. But you condemn them because this is the way you also condemn yourself. The word of God is in doing, not in hearing, not in talking. So the Lord is encouraging us this morning. He said, when we punish others, when we are judging others, we are judging ourselves. In John chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible says, look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. And how do you judge correctly? Is to put yourself in that same shoe, empathy. If it is you, will you do it yourself? If somebody does it to you, will you like it? You carry a knife, you want to stab somebody. If you are stabbed, will you be happy? With the same knife. Philippians 1 9 to 10, the Bible said, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters, so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. Alright? In Proverbs 13 20, the Bible said, Walk with the wise. And become wise, associate with fools, and get into to, into troubles. In First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse thirty-three, verse said, "Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupt good characters." All right. And in Matthew seven verse fifteen, verse said, "Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves." In summary, he said what? There is a difference between discerning and judging. Discernment protects us and others from bad influences, deception, and even false teachings. It is wise to be wary of those who, who habitually sin and tempt others to join them. However, it is not wise to be quick to make up our mind about others and write them off. We may only be seeing one side of them or be basing our judgment on a single experience. We may not know how much God has grown them from where they once were or how earnestly they are seeking to grow further. Judging others is better left to God because it is easy to misjudge others. He set the standard for accepting others. Praise the Lord. This morning, I don't know as many as want to also start up a journey with God this morning uh, in regards to what we have been hearing or in regards to these few things that you have had this morning as regarding accepting others. Can we pray together? 
Lord Jesus, have mercy on my soul. I am sorry I have been misjudging people. I am sorry I have been taking people or taking your word for granted. For this morning, forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. Delete it from the book of death. Breathe upon me the breath of life, a fresh breath from you, O Lord. Lord, help me to live for you and reign with you in eternity. It is my desire, O Lord. Satan, you have deceived me to believe that I can judge people and get away with it. Henceforth, I renounce you. Take your filthy hands out of my life. I don't know you. I belong to Jesus, and today I am born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, I want to encourage you to keep doing and applying the things that you have heard from these teachings that we have been taking. I want to also know that a number of the clips are in this channel as we go through them day, on, uh, day by day and also try to search them out. You discover that the Lord is building and doing something in your life and you are soon becoming better than you were yesterday. And my, to my viewers all over the world, I want to encourage you, please invite your friends. Keep inviting your friends. Subscribe to my channels and also share to others so that they can be part of what God is doing in your life. And I know that as you key into it, your life will not remain the same again. Have a pleasant week ahead of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.